Uh, thank you all for being here today as we announce some great collaborations which are going to highlight Massachusetts as a leader in healthcare and biotechnology innovation, not just here in the United States, but around the world. I want to acknowledge several of our NIMAC partners who are joining us today from Massachusetts and Europe. From Massachusetts, the Massachusetts Life Science Center and the Massachusetts Technology Collaborative. From Northern Ireland, Invest Northern Ireland. From Finland, Tekis and VTT. From Catalonia, BioCat, and also the European Connected Health Alliance. Our two announcements today stem from our work through NIMAC, the informal organization we started in 2009 to make transatlantic connections establishing Massachusetts as the gateway to the United States for European nations and expanding opportunities for research and business growth here and in Europe. We began NIMAC with Northern Ireland and we quickly added both Finland and the Catalonia region of Spain as members. And together we have realized that small connections can make a very big impact and that is why we are announcing today. Our first announcement brings together some of the best doctors and researchers from Massachusetts, Finland, and Northern Ireland who are working on a non-invasive way to evaluate whether polyps and premalignant lesions may be cancerous. This cutting-edge research, begun by Dr. Ramon Franco of the Massachusetts Eye and Ear Infirmary, will save patients from unnecessary surgery and be a more cost-effective diagnosis of premalignant lesions. This research has been awarded funding through the Massachusetts Life Sciences Center with additional commitments from Finland and Northern Ireland. And I would like to ask Dr. Susan Wyndham Bannister of the Massachusetts Life Science Center to say a few words about uh, this project and the importance of these types of collaboration. Susan. Thank you, Madam President. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Um, as you heard, I'm Sue Wyndham Bannister. I'm the president and CEO of the Massachusetts Life Sciences Center. The center is the hub of the life sciences community here in Massachusetts, and we are the agency that is administering our state's 10-year, $1 billion life sciences initiative. At the 2000 Bio Conference, which was here in Boston, our governor, Deval Patrick, announced his vision for this life sciences initiative. Under the strong leadership of Senate President Murray, the initiative was enacted by the state just one year later, and the governor was able to sign it just prior to bio in San Diego. The Life Sciences Center strategy is based on investments in academic research, early stage companies, workforce development, infrastructure, and partnerships and collaboration to advance life sciences research, development, and commercialization. A critically important component of our strategy has been to turn Massachusetts into a laboratory for new types of partnerships and collaborations that will significantly improve the pace and the efficiency of innovation. Innovation partnerships not only require collaboration within the Massachusetts community, however, but between Massachusetts and our international colleagues. No city, no state, no country has all the expertise, tools, models, cohorts, et cetera, to address the increasing challenge of significant new discovery and development. Knowledge creation is occurring around the world, and it must be rapidly disseminated. Moreover, no sector has the ability to drive innovation alone, public and private sectors also must increase their collaboration. Senate President Murray had the vision to recognize that the model for collaboration in a global innovation economy requires public, private, and international partnerships, and she moved forward to make this happen for Massachusetts. As you heard the Senate President describe, the NIMAC collaboration is a public, private, multi-country collaboration that is committed to sharing ex expertise and experience in order to develop joint projects that are focused on research and teaching collaboration, clinical collaboration, market entry support, sharing of best practices, 
and influencing decision making in both the, U the U.S. and Europe. The Life Sciences Center is proud to be funding the first collaborative project to emerge from the NIMAC collaboration, a biomolecular analysis of laryngeal dysplasia in order to develop a molecular profile that will have predictive value in assessing the cancer risk in patients with laryngeal precancerous lesions. Dr. Ramon Franco, who's the director of the lar laryngology division at the Mass Eye and Ear Infirmary, will tell you more about the specifics of this project. Let me just say that from the Life Science Center's perspective, this project provides an exciting opportunity to extend the application of novel technology that supports personalized medicine. It's a chance to support improved patient quality of life through better and more precise diagnostics. And it's a very important opportunity to explore an issue that has implications for the costs of healthcare delivery. Under Senate President's leadership, Senate President Murray's leadership, the center looks forward to a continued engagement with our NIMAC colleagues from Northern Ireland, from Catalonia, from Finland, and we have no doubt that this is just the first of many unique collaborative projects that will emerge. Thank you. It is a particular uh, pleasure for me to introduce you to Dr. Ramon Franco, and he's going to talk about the research. But Dr. Franco has been volunteering for years. Uh, his time, which he does, by the way, all over the world, but he goes with me to Russia and volunteers his time there also. Um, so it is, um, we're very, very pleased to have, be able to make this announcement today, and particularly for his research. Dr. Franco. Thank you, very, thank you very much for those very kind words. Um, I just want to take a few seconds to, uh, to thank a few people. Uh, first, our State Senate President, Therese Murray, for her vision creating the NIMAC collaboration. Science is not a solo project or endeavor, and having a, a collaboration like NIMAC is just unbelievable for us. I also want to thank the governor for his courage in creating and funding the Massachusetts Life Sciences. Uh, it takes a lot to put a billion dollars into an idea especially when it's to, to make Massachusetts really the, the premier place in the United States for biotechnology. And the last person I want to thank is uh, Susan Windham Bannister, the president and CEO of the Massachusetts Life Sciences, who has been an ardent supporter of this project. So thank you very much. So today, as we're on the cusp from going from springtime to summer, we're also on the cusp of going into a personalized medicine uh, era in the United States and across the world. I, as a practicing laryngologist, I have patients who come to me and they have pre-malignant lesions of their voice box. And we don't really know what to do with them at this point. After we biopsy and we make sure that there's no cancer, we're still left in this predicament where we can't tell that person exactly what their chances are of having cancer in the future. The project that we're proposing is to study and catalog the changes DNA, RNA, and protein changes within those pre-malignant cells so that we can then compare samples in the future to the samples that we've already collected and give patients personalized care, tell them that they have a certain chance of having a problem. These patients who have pre-malignant lesions, 90% of them will never go on to have cancer. So 90% are benign, and yet, in today's world, we treat all 100% of them the same. So that really becomes a waste of resources because we're taking 10% of patients who have a problem and we're exposing the other 90% to surgical procedures, medical procedures, things that cost money, time, and can cause harm to patients. So one of the main benefits of this is to understand the progression from normal to cancer through dysplasia to, re to reduce healthcare costs by not exposing people who don't require medical care really to give targeted medical therapy to those who need it. We also envision this as a platform where in the future we'll be able to take the techniques that we've learned and apply it to breast cancer, to cervical cancer, to lung cancer. And lastly, through understanding the biomolecular mechanisms that take things from normal to cancer, we hope to uh, engage the, the therapeutic side and pharma and come up with novel, tech, novel targets 
that we, where we can use biomolecular techniques and, and pharmaceuticals to prevent patients from going from precancer to cancer. Now, as I mentioned before, science is not a solo project. And I do want to uh, acknowledge that I'm working with some of the, the best doctors and best institutions in the world. I'm working with Dr. Raja Gopal's lab at the Mass General Hospital, and he's in the division of regenerative medicine. And we're also working with Harvard and MIT's Broad Institute. Internationally, through the NIMAC collaboration, uh, we're working with VTT in Finland and several clinicians and uh, researchers in both Northern Ireland as well as in Catalonia. Now with that, I want to introduce a colleague of mine uh, who will be working on this project from VTT, and his name is Sampo Samolisto. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Senator Murray for inviting me to say a few words, and Dr. Franco for the lovely introduction. Uh, it is always nice to come back to Boston. It's a beautiful city and also a great hub of biotechnology and medicine. For VTT, which stands for the Technical Research Center of Finland, uh, Massachusetts is a key area because our mission is to use science to improve people's lives. And in order to do this, we need partners. And Massachusetts is filled with great companies and universities for us to partner with. This collaboration with Dr. Franco, the state of Massachusetts, and Harvard Medical School is a prime example of a partnership uh, that has tremendous potential to improve the lives of people living with cancer or who are of risk of developing cancer. As many of us know, cancer is a terrible disease that either directly or indirectly involves almost all of us here. Although we've seen tremendous improvements in lowering cancer deaths due to improved diagnosis and new, more effective treatments, there is still a long road ahead of us before we can rid humans of this disease. The holy grail in winning the war against cancer is learning how to detect the disease as early as possible. Because the sooner uh, a doctor detects cancer in a patient, the better it are, is that patient's prognosis. And this collaboration is focused on just that, developing new technology for improving the odds that a patient can, can beat cancer and live longer and better. It is a perfect example of how dedicated scientists from different parts of the world, USA, Northern Ireland, Catalonia, and Finland, can join forces and help patients all over the world. This collaboration is also a perfect example of how groups like NIMAC can produce concrete initiatives that can save lives. VTT is a proud member, proud to be a member of NIMAC, and we are eager to pursue more initiatives such as this exciting and important collaboration. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Um, we are very excited today to also announce an event that will take place on October 23rd and 24th here in Boston. As a leader in e-health initiatives, Massachusetts has been chosen to host the first US-EU conference outside of Washington, DC, to discuss and promote the MOU signed by the European Commission and the United States Department of Health and Human Services to pr promote e-health. This two-day event will include a business marketplace that will provide opportunities for companies, health providers, research institutions, and others from both sides of the Atlantic to encourage business relationships, research, and other collaborations. It is designed to generate real business and to foster lasting, effective relationships, as well as to supply market intelligence on the size, structure, and potential opportunities of the joint market of more than 800 million citizens. We already have commitments from the Northern Ireland, Finland, England, Spain, Scotland, and France, and expect to have several other European countries and regions to sign on. We just haven't caught up with them yet. This gives us a real opportunity to again solidify Massachusetts' leading role in the United States on e-health initiatives and provide opportunities for European countries who want to break into the US market. The second day of the conference will provide opportunities to hear from high-ranking EU and US officials on the MOU 
and the potential for collaboration that this agreement provides. The events stemmed from our work we have done through NIMAC and through the European Connected Health Alliance. The connections we have created in a few short years have shown that these types of collaborations can foster significant benefits both economically and socially. Massachusetts is way ahead of the rest of this country on these issues and on the forefront of how these partnerships can be an economic benefit to the Commonwealth and its residents. So I'd now like to ask NIMAC member and European Connected Health Alliance representative Ilka Vartanian to say a few words. Madam President, <clears throat> thank you for your kind words. The events in October uh, 23rd and 24th uh, are results of the concrete results of the excellent and systematic collaboration that has been going on within the NIWOD network for some years now. This network started, as said, between Northern Ireland and Massachusetts. Quite soon uh, it expanded to cover Finland and now also it's covering Spain, Catalonia. At this time, and at this point, we have reached the point where we are actually building up the bridge between USA and EU. As earlier we heard also today, another exciting announcement about the research collaboration and funding decisions that has been taken uh, by the members of the NIMOC networks. These two announcements are actually now covering two of the three working pillars that we have in our network. The third one, diabetes, is expected to have similar kinds of the results in the near future. As we all know, these kind of the results would not be possible without the commitment of the other parties, with the, without the mutual trust of the parties, and of course, without a great devotion of the individual persons. Bearing that in our mind, <clears throat> I would like on behalf of the NIMAC people on both sides of the ocean to express our gratitude to you, Madam President, as well to our Chairman Brian O'Connor, who unfortunately is not here. Thank you. I'd like to ask Dr. Pamela Goldberg, who is CEO of the Massachusetts Technology Collaborative, to say a few words. Good morning. I'd be remiss if I were to offer any remarks today without first and foremost thanking Senate President Murray for her vision and leadership in bringing this collaboration together. She and her staff have done incredible work to form and nurture the relationships which have resulted in today's announcement. I also want to thank all of our NIMAC partners who have joined us today for your partnership and commitment to these endeavors. As you can tell, it's only the beginning and there's tremendous potential ahead of us, including this US-EU conference in October. Thanks to the leadership and commitment of the Senate President, the Governor, and Secretary Bialecki, Massachusetts has become a national leader and a global player in e-health. We at the Massachusetts Technology Collaborative have been delighted to be a partner in this work. Our eHealth Institute is Commonwealth's entity for healthcare innovation, technology, and competitiveness. The eHealth Institute advances health IT throughout the state and is working to ensure that all of our practicing physicians adopt electronic health records and are connected to a statewide health information exchange by January of 2015. Massachusetts is a national leader in patient quality and care, and technology is a critical piece of that success. We enjoy near universal health insurance coverage. 98% of our pharmacies can accept electronic prescriptions, and we have led the nation for the past four years in the percentage of prescription write, written electronically. 70% of our physicians across Massachusetts are using electronic health records, which is one of the highest rates in the United States. Health IT is becoming a premier cornerstone of our innovation economy in Massachusetts, as well as the global economy. When we support healthcare innovation, we also bolster our ability to compete on a global stage. Collaborations like this conference in October provide Massachusetts companies 
researchers and innovators, opportunities to connect and exchange best practices in healthcare and health IT with global leaders. We know that global collaboration, increased growth of new technologies, fosters business partnerships, and most importantly, improves methods for safer, smarter, and more affordable health care. Therefore, we're delighted to welcome this Connected Health Conference to Massachusetts this fall. We're looking forward to working with our European partners to foster innovation, collaboration, and growth in this important sector. Thank you. NIMAC has been a catalyst for great international collaborations, and we plan to continue building these relationships and expand the economic opportunities these partnerships have been able to provide and make it a more formal contract. So I want to thank you all for joining us, and we hope to see you in October. <laughs>